reality is that Indians have been in uniform in our country since its formation. Now the Civil War is a real serious issue because uh, the reality is that the, the South, most of the main tribes were located in the South. You know, the, the so-called civilized tribes, you know, the Choctaws, the Cherokees, the Creeks. And as you may be aware, uh, Indians also had slavery. And it was slave, they had slavery before blacks were brought into the Americas. I mean, they, they captured people and they took them into the communities and they became into the community. But see, with the blacks uh, and Indians, the slavery was kind of uh, colorblind. Because you know you uh, you know you were a slave in a sense, but you could be married into the tribe, you could be uh, equal in a lot of ways, except that you didn't have the same freedom. You couldn't go home for dinner like you used to. Like you know Osceola, the chief of the of uh, the Seminoles, his his mother was black, so uh, you had that kind of situation. So blacks had a different kind of status. In the, when they were slaves of Indians, as opposed to the, the non-Indian community in the South. So anyhow, when the war broke out, uh, it was almost logical that the Indians would protect their homeland, and the, the Confederacy very much wanted Indian allegiance, and what they promised the Indians was that they, when, when they won the Civil War, the Indians would then be able to be in their parliament, in their congress, as equal members. Now that's something unheard of for Indians in the North. I mean, Indians were just always the bottom of the totem pole. And so that was a, a real carrot that was held out to Indian communities, that you'll be equal to us once we become, uh, once we defeat the North. And so what you had then were thousands and thousands of Indians in uniform fighting for the Confederacy. And in fact, there were a couple of ba battles, like Pea Ridge, Arkansas. There were huge numbers of soldiers on both sides, but they were Indians. But they were in blue uniforms and in gray uniforms. But even going back, let's say, to the War of 1812, we all know about Andrew Jackson's, you know, defeating the British in New Orleans. What we don't get told in the textbooks is that he had like 500 Indians in uniform with him. They were Choctaws. Um, the last Confederate general to surrender was Stan Wati, a, a Cherokee. What, again, people don't even realize, the highest ranking Indian in the Civil War was Eli Parker. He was Grant's secretary. He ended up becoming, after the war, the first Indian to run the Bureau of Indian Affairs. But when Lee surrendered at Appomattox, it was uh, Parker who wrote the surrender documents because he had the best handwriting. And it, the other officers with uh, Grant said, yeah, he had the best handwriting. But anyhow, everyone you know, knew that he was, he was a Seneca Indian. And when Lee walked into the room, he saw Parker and he said, he said, I'm so glad a real American is here. And Parker says to him, sir, we are all Americans here. But I mean, this is the kind of dignity and class that Indians have provided in the military.